What's up? Check, check, check. Can you guys all hear me? All right. Uh, thanks again for having me out. This is, uh, I think this is the third or fourth time I've been down here at St. Francis, and it's always a pleasure to come and share some stuff um, with you guys. Uh, my name is Orville Klein. I've been an Ableton certified trainer since 2009. I've done stuff with music and all kinds of various aspects pretty much my whole life, ever since I started playing saxophone, I think in second grade. Um, yeah, so music, you know, it's been a long, kind of a constantly changing, evolving journey for me in my career over the years. Um, started off being primarily just a musician, um, going from saxophone to playing guitar, getting in bands, and then eventually that led me into getting into the world of electronic and digital music production simply because I wanted to be able to record all the bands that I was playing in, to be able to make demos and get uh, right, get put down the songs that we were playing and writing into a form that was shareable with everyone else. Um, over the years, my DJ career kind of took off and a lot of my bands kind of took the back burner to all my electronic, uh, primarily focused stuff, but um, I've always still kind of been a musician and tried to be able, and have tried to incorporate live musicianship and feeling into the electronic production and stuff that I do. Um, so yeah, it just, uh, so today, uh, today's focus of the workshop is gonna be utilizing Ableton Live 11 um, specifically for musicians. And this could be electronic musicians or solo instrumentalists or anyone that just does stuff with music. This is Ableton Live 11. Um, when you first open it up and first install it, it's gonna look something like this. And if you're not familiar with it, um, it could be a little bit intimidating. It almost looks more like an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. We have all these, these charts and lines kind of going across. There's not a whole lot of stuff there. Um, but this, the, once, you, once you familiarize yourself with the interface, you'll find that it's actually really simple and not that intimidating. And for anyone that, that is pretty new to it, I recommend turning on this little box in the bottom left corner of the screen. This is called the info view. And this will, as you move the mouse around and you point and hover over different things inside of the interface, it's going to show you what it is and then suggestions on how to use it. So if you're ever not sure, like, what is this button up here? When I move the mouse way up there, that's capture MIDI. Click here to capture the MIDI notes that you just played. A new clip containing the phrase you played will be created on every monitored MIDI track. So that, that sounds really complicated, but it's, it's really not. And I think it's one of my, um, this is actually, this capture button is something they added in Ableton 10, which was the previous version. Um, and it, but it's actually one of my favorite features. Um, what this allows you to do is, um, what, I, what I did earlier, just while we were, we were hanging out and waiting to get started, is I pulled up a piano, a virtual piano instrument on MIDI track one. So I could play some keys right here with my little handy portable MIDI controller. On track two, I pulled up a drum kit, right? Right, so I can come up here and I can just jam something out. So let's say if I'm trying to write something and I don't really have a set form or a destination or I don't know like what it is, particularly where I'm, I'm gonna go with this, but I just wanna jam out. Almost like if I'm walking up to a drum kit and if I just start playing that, um, I could do, I, Ableton will be smart enough to kind of figure out the intention of what I was playing and then it can use that as a building block to keep moving forward. So I'm just walking up to my keyboard. This could be, a, this could be an electronic drum kit. Um, as long as it's MIDI and connected to Ableton Live, this will work. So I'm just gonna come up and I'm not really a drummer, um, but I could, I'm just gonna jam out and just try to improvise a beat. And let's see what happens. All right, let's, so I didn't even complete it, but let's, let's try it now. There we go. All right, cool. So I was, what I was playing was actually closer to 100 beats per minute and not 113. It was a little bit off, but um, the software isn't perfect, but it could do some cool things. So now that I've got this in here, um, there's a lot we can do with it. Uh, I can first of all clean it up because the performance wasn't perfect. So like some of these, uh, some of these snares are a little bit off. I can grab them. I can nudge them forward, nudge them backwards. My 
my Tom fills here were kind of a little bit sloppy, so I'll move, let's move these over. Um, now, almost every digital audio workstation that has MIDI has a quantize function built into it. So if I want to quantize all these notes, I could draw a box around them or hit Command A to select all, check my quantize settings, and now I can go in and choose to tighten up the timing of all the notes by a certain amount. Boom, that just kind of fixed, made me a tighter drummer in one click right away. All right, let's, let's hear what that sounds like. It should be a lot tighter with the metronome now. All right, cool. And let's, uh, let's do, make this a kick drum and maybe I'll put, I'll, I'll make this tom fill a little bit more interesting by mixing up, uh, putting some different toms in there. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's hear what this sounds like. All right, cool. So it's a little bit more interesting than Phil. So now because this is MIDI, let's say if I, this kit sounded okay, but maybe I wanted to try a different one, I could go back here and I could just swap it out with a different drum kit. I'm not committed to that one that I originally played. Um, if we did that in the studio, it would take a lot more work, right? If we played uh, an acoustic kit and you're like, you know what, I don't like it. So I'll move, get it out of the room, set up the new kit, set up all the mics again. It's, it's kind of a pain. So MIDI makes it easy to swap it out. So this is another drum kit by the same company called TuneTrack that made the other one. And I, I think uh, it'll just give us like a little bit of a different drum flavor. Now that we have, um, once, once this kit finishes loading and we, we could do it, we could go in and we could make some variations on this initial performance. So. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is show, showcase some new Ableton 11 features that were previously impossible to do that we can implement to make this, um, make this drum, uh, make this drum, this MIDI drum pattern even more live and organic and interesting. All right, so let's hear how this new kit sounds. All right, that's, that's it kind of works, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a drier sounding kit. So we'll roll with that for now. Um, so this, these little colored rectangles that we see up here uh, that I just recorded to, these are called MIDI clips. And these empty spaces are called clip slots. We can have an unlimited amount of clips on, in, an, um, uh, in an unlimited amount of clip slots and tracks inside of Ableton Live. There's no limit. So I'm gonna duplicate this top one I'm going to change the color of it just to make it a little bit different. And let's, I just want to show some cool new Ableton 11 features of stuff that we can do to make this a little bit more interesting. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go here and, and draw in a whole bunch of closed hi-hats. And I could do that with draw mode. B is the shortcut to turn draw mode on. Or there's a little pencil up here that looks like we're drawing something. When that's on, I can just click once and draw in a whole bunch of notes in a row. And if you hold down Option, they'll put them all on the same track. And let's hear what that sounds like. So now it sounds like I'm drumming really fast, right? It will be really hard for a real drummer to play that consistently, all those hi-hats, and still play everything else. So there's things we can do to make it feel more like it was a real drummer that actually played it. One, um, one function we can utilize that's new in Ableton 11 is the velocity range. Um, in the MIDI world, velocity is how hard or how soft we trigger a note on our MIDI controller. So here's a, high, a higher velocity and a low velocity. Right, it's quiet. And just same thing is you could be the tightest drummer in the world, but every time you hit a, any of your drums, whether it's a kick or a snare, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, but right now, these, because these are all, we're all drawn in at the same velocity, they feel very unnatural, not realistic. So a new feature they've added in Ableton 11 is the ability to apply a velocity range to a sequence of MIDI notes in our MIDI editor. So what that means is I can select all these, these closed hi-hats and then turn the, the range of velocities up or down on them. All right, so with that, so now um, if I turn up the velocity range. Let's see here. Uh, let's let's take a listen. I'm going to turn it way down. You could hear it sneaking in and sneaking out just a little bit. 
though that, that, that was probably too large of a range, so I'm gonna maybe set the range to be like negative 20. Um, the, the range of velocities we have in the MIDI, world, MIDI note world is from zero to 127. So if we, go, if we go from, let's say, if they all were at 99 or 100, uh, and if we go down to negative 20, it's just like we're gonna be drawing up and down just a little bit. So let's hear how that sounds. Now it sounds more like it might have actually been a real drummer playing it just by simply increasing the velocity range. If we turn it down a lot. So we gotta kinda, let's go in and kinda find a sweet spot where it still sounds consistent, but, but not too crazy where they're, they're coming in and out. So that's, so that's really handy just for creating um, right away, like I can instantly go in and make this feel more real um, if I'm trying to fake the listener and think it was a real drummer playing it. All right, so that's, that's one new feature. Another new feature in Ableton 11 is our um, MIDI note chance, okay? So similar to the velocity, what the chance does is it, it will give you a percentage um, that will dictate the chance that that note is actually going to play. So if I come up here and if I select the notes again, now what I could do is actually grab the chance of all these and put them down. So if I put it to 50% chance for each time, now it's a 50-50 chance that that hi-hat is actually going to play. If you hear it, like, some of them are on, some of them are off. So that's kind of cool. I, I can just, so it's just, if I keep playing this over and over again, it's never gonna be the same twice. So that's one way you can instantly create a whole bunch of variation just by incorporating some randomization into the note chance and the velocity range, which I think is really cool. All right, so, and we can use that to make it sound more realistic. Let's just make one more pattern. I'm gonna duplicate this clip right here. I'm gonna change the color so I know it's something different. And now, if I'm trying to, if this is like a verse section of the song, what I might do is, is take these hi-hats out. I can deactivate them and then maybe I'll put like a ride um, or a crash in on every quarter note. Boom, one, two, three, four, and we'll duplicate those. So now it should, now the, the ride is a little bit, let's do like a China instead. A little bit more rock kind of feeling and sounding, right? And then the same thing with these. What I might do is I'll give it a little bit of velocity range. Um, I'll turn the range down by about negative 20, so everyone's gonna be a little bit different. There's other things you can do to, to make, um, make these drums feel more realistic as well. So, so far what we did was we randomized the velocity and the chance that they were playing. Um, if we go into the simpler, uh, that was triggering this note to play. Simpler is Ableton's simple sampler, which is what we tip, we're typically using to play, use MIDI to trigger our drums. There's actually a feature built in here which will randomize the panning for that sound. So every time it plays, it, it's gonna automatically bounce back and forth between the left and the right speaker in a random way, which will also make it feel more immersive and more realistic. I'll turn it up a lot. You hear somewhere over there, somewhere over here. So that gives it more of a, of a human feel. All right. You just that, that slight amount of randomization. All right, cool. So we have some drums. Um, now that we actually recorded and edited and, and took some time on some stuff, I'm gonna hit save. It's a good idea to have a dedicated folder on your computer where you're saving all of your projects. I have a projects folder on my external hard drive, this little guy over here, and I have a dedicated uh, folder for workshops and stuff like this, and we'll call this uh, the St. Franz Jam or something like that. And I'll put today's date so I know how new or how old it is without having to open it up, and boom. All right, cool. All right, so we have, we have some drums or some percussion. I just came up and I improvised and played something. Let's say that, now here, who here doesn't play any instruments at all? Everyone plays something, all right, cool. What, what's your name? Not to single you out, but. 
Natalie, so Natalie, so if I asked you to come up and play some chords on the on a piano, maybe it would it probably wouldn't be your, as easy for you to do it as compared to someone else who's had years of piano lessons, right? Or if we ask you to to compose something that's in a particular key um, with a particular chord progression. So let's um, let's lay some chords down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here back to the sound section. Um, this is our Ableton browser, if I haven't mentioned it yet. And in the Ableton browser, we can navigate to find stuff to use. All of the presets from all of the instruments. We can navigate to external sample packs to anywhere else that have, might, might have samples and stuff on our computer. So we have instruments, MIDI effects, presets, and all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm just going to go to sounds, and if I want some chords, I like just, I like starting out, um, I like starting out my chords with just a clean, simple piano. That really lets you kind of feel the notes without hearing the kind of, kind of without focusing on what the sound is that you're you're utilizing in it. So let's that one's okay, but let's find something a little bit cleaner. All right, here's like an Uptown Studio piano. This this is from another aftermarket pack um, that you can get from the Ableton website if you want. And so if you're not, let's just say, um, if you want to make a chord progression, it's, it's a lot easier than it, it might seem like if you're not already a musician. I think a lot of people mysticize the process of creating chords and making chord progressions, but it's a lot simpler if you kind of break it down to its, its fundamental parts. And if you could use a tool like this. So um, one of my favorite new features, aside from the capture, which was actually Ableton 10, but one of my favorite new Ableton 11 features is this MIDI note editor scale function. So what this does is it shows you, it makes it easy to either show you um, or to edit notes that are in a particular scale or key, all right? So when I double clicked here, what it did was it created a one bar, um, one bar looping uh, MIDI clip. So if I want to make a chord progression, um, my chord progression, it, might, it probably is going to need to be at least two bars or maybe four bars or it could be eight bars, depending on how complex of a chord progression we're, we're talking about. So um, just to keep it simple for now, I'm going to change this from a one bar loop to a two bars. I can just change the length right here. And now what we can do is let's, we can pick a key. Um, it's a good idea to sometimes start with a key in mind if you're trying to compose or, or play something or write something, because that's going to narrow down the amount of note choices you have to work with. So what's a, what's a fun key that you, anyone else likes to compose in? Give me any key. C, C all right. <laughs> let's do, we can do C major, or let's do C minor. C minor is just a little bit, um, it's a little bit, composing in C, Major is easy um, because you just stay on the white keys and you're, you're in good shape, right? You don't have to think about it too much. But C minor, on the other hand, we have to start incorporating some sharp and flat notes. So as soon as I turn on the scale button um, and I set it to be C minor, what it does is it illuminates the, the notes of the scale that are in, that, the notes that are in that, that particular key or scale. So instead of C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, we have C, um, D, E flat, F, um, G, A flat, B flat, and C, right? So you, you have to incorporate those flat notes if you want to be able to play the C major scale. Now, if you're an accomplished pianist, um, you don't even have to think about that. You can just automatically transpose it. Or if you know how to play a scale on a guitar, you, you don't have to think about it. But now all of a sudden, we're like, we have to translate that to the sequencer on the screen. And it could be, it, it might not be as intuitive, but the scale function makes it really easy. So if I'm trying to draw in that scale, as long as I stay on the, on the colored lines, it's kind of, it's really easy. Right, it's super easy. To make it even easier, we could hit this scale button right here above the MIDI note editor. And now what it does is it throws away all the notes that weren't in that scale. So it doesn't even let you draw a note that's not in that particular scale or key. Um, so boom, now I, if I just follow the steps going up like this, one at a time. Same thing. Right, really easy. 
let's say I want to descend the scale, I could duplicate this and then hit the reverse button. Boom. That reverse button has been there for a long time, in case you guys didn't know, in Ableton. <laughs> um, I could also invert, so it'll, it'll flip it back upside down again. But when you're doing the scale, invert and reverse does the same thing. All right, so now, we, now, we, and so now that we know what notes um, we have to work with, um, let's, let's, we can come up, we can really easily utilize this to make a chord progression. Um, what is a chord progression now? Just, just to even backtrack to some music theory a little bit further. So a, a chord progression is just a progression of chords that work in a particular scale or key. Um, cause can, any, does any, can anyone tell me what the most common chord progression is? Or a popular chord progression? One, five, six, four. One, five, six, four. Very good, thank you. So what the hell does that mean? For you guys that, that don't know, what, what, if I said one, five, six, four, what it means is um, we use the first chord of the scale, we use the, the fifth chord of the scale, the sixth chord of the scale, and the fourth chord of the scale. So, all right, so now how do you translate? Still, you might be like, all right, so what does that, how, how does that translate here? So let, let me show you. So if we want to figure out what the first chord of the scale is, um, all, all you need to do is, is draw in the first chord. So since we're in C minor, C is the first note of that scale. So I'm going to start with um, our root right here. I'm just going to make this a half bar. I'm going to skip a note, to skip a step of the scale. And I'm going to skip another step of the scale. Boom, there's the one chord, which is our C minor chord of the scale. Um, it's that easy. Once you can figure out how to, to play one note, skip a note in the scale, um, play another note and then skip it. You, once you have this pattern, you can come up with any, you'll, you'll be able to figure out every single chord in every single scale, essentially. All right, so if I take this and duplicate this, um, we said the one, five, six, four. So we know that the C is the f one chord because it's the first note of the scale. So we need to figure out what the fifth chord is. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, I'm landing here on the G. So I know all I need to do is take this, move this up to the G, boom, there's the fifth note, the fifth chord of the scale. So any, can anyone guess what the sixth chord is gonna be then? What was that? Move it up once. So if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, right? There's our A flat, boom, right there. And then what's the fourth? One, two, three, four, it's, it's right here. Now was that that hard? Not, not really, right? And just, just having, having the notes all right here make it really easy to figure out how to do all kinds of crazy fun stuff with chords. So let's hear what this sounds like. Now, does it sound familiar at all? Like maybe you've heard this before? It's, it sounds familiar because this particular chord progression is the most common used pop chord progression of all time. Like there's literally thousands of songs out there in the, in the popular world of, of popular music that have used this same progression, but typically they're gonna be slowing it down or speeding it up, playing it in different keys, but it's all about using this particular sequence of chords in, this, in a particular order. Um, I'm, I'm gonna pull, uh, I, I, if I had some internet, I would, there's a really cool, look, if you guys are bored, look up a video called, uh, by a, a comedy group called The Axis of Awesome, and they literally mash up like a hundred different songs together that all use the same chord progression in one place. It's pretty, it's pretty entertaining. But anyways, but now you guys know the secret if, if you're trying to make music that people recognize but, but, don't, but haven't heard, this is a good starting place, right? So um, now I'm gonna, do, let's, I'm gonna use this as a foundation. Now that we have just this chord progression, there's a lot we can do with it to make it, make it interesting and, and, and kind of go even further with the chords on this. So um, let's say if we wanna get really fancy now, um, these are what we call triad chords because we're just using three notes. Now if we take, and let's say if we wanna make these chords sound a little bit deeper or more interesting, we can turn these into what's called um, 
seven chords. So if I add another note, if I skip a note, all I did was I added, I skipped another space and added another, the, the next note in the scale. And now what we have is our seventh chord. It sounds a little bit jazzier, maybe a little bit more sophisticated, right? Than just, just those three note chords. That, so it makes it really easy to, to expand your chords. Um, this also makes it really easy to invert your chords. When you, when you have an inverted chord, we just grab the bottom note and shift it up an octave. And now by doing so, it kind of puts them, it puts all four of these chords in the same kind of note range. So it might sound a little bit tighter musically, but it's the same chords, but just the first one is inverted. Right, so just, it's the same feeling, but they're just a little bit tighter. Maybe if I invert this one, now look at the similarities to, you, you start to see some patterns that happen when you invert certain chords of your chord progression as well. It's a little slightly different feeling, but it's the same kind of vibe. So we could, Live 11 really makes it easy to, um, um, to do these types of transpositions. So let's say now, um, you know what, I started this in C minor, but maybe, um, maybe it sounds better, I like when I play stuff in E minor, um, or D minor, which is a slightly, the, the, the bass note is slightly lower, which will put it down to a lower range. Some singers have like a limited range where they can sing in, they, can, it's, they will sing better in lower keys on the scale than higher keys. Um, so if I wanted to transpose this, it makes it pretty easy to do that as well. So let's, let's say we want to go from C um, like down to like a, a half step down to a D. Now that I've done that, I can select all these notes and just move them down. Uh, let's see, this was my C up here. So if I go down an octave and then up one, now they're all, I've transposed it down this, this down to the lower octave D and it's, if you notice, I can tell it works because these are all the notes are still on the highlighted lines. If I moved it to the wrong place, this, I can see that now we're not in the key of D minor anymore, right? We just, we just transpose. So it makes it really easy to transpose. All right, cool. So that's, that's a, that's a generic chord progression. Um, now some music, um, a lot of music is, has a lot simpler chord progressions. Like um, sometimes you only need one chord and that everything can play, or play along with just one chord at a time. Sometimes we, can just, we just need two. Um, sometimes we'll have 12 chords. You know, we can really, it just really depends on what you're doing. But for pop music, using four chords with this pattern is, makes it easy. All right, so uh, any questions about the MIDI notes, MIDI editing stuff? Cool. Um, let's keep going. So some other new features in Ableton Live um, is the, there's a, a brand new feature that they've added called comping. And this has been around in other digital audio workstations like Pro Tools in some ways and, and Logic definitely. But um, it just came out in Ableton 11 and it really allows you to, to go in and um, and just compile uh, different parts of different takes that you might be recording in real time. So I'm gonna hit save again, and what we're gonna do is, is uh, shift gears for a second and, trans and just move these patterns that I've, these clips that I've created in the, the session view into the arrangement view. All right. As soon as my computer finishes saving. Like I'm due for an upgrade. This, they just, I have a feeling the new Macs are about to come out, so all of our old ones are gonna start slowing down. It's called planned obsolete, obsolete, ah, ah. planned obsolete, planned obsolete, ah, I can't say that. Obsolescence, thank you. <laughs> all right, let's grab both of these clips right here, and I can, I can just drag and draw stuff right into my range view. So we have some drums, and we'll have this chord progression playing. Um, maybe I'll grab this pattern. We'll let that play for eight bars and this one, and then the whole thing can repeat. Something like that. All right, so now we're starting to kind of organize these, um, organizing these, just these loops into a, a musical structure. 
So let's say now, you know what, I want to try to come up with some guitar riffs that might work with this particular chord progression that I just played. So I'm going to go here to audio track three. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this guitar. I'm going to set the input to be one and two. And over here, I have my guitar pedal that is, I'm, it's also doubling as an audio interface. So it's going to allow me to um, play and record right into Ableton Live at the same time. All right. So let's see if we can just get this uh, set up. So I'm just kind of jamming out, and so I'm not, I really have no idea what I want to play, but I'm just going to let this, this section, um, I'm just going to let the, a segment in the arrangement keep looping. I'm going to record arm the track right here, and I'm just going to start, I'm just going to keep jamming and improvising something without worrying about exactly where it's going to land in the song or what's the best take or what's not. I'm just going to let it keep rolling and see what happens. Kind of messed up, but that's okay. Let's keep going. <laughs> I'll try something completely different. All right, cool. So some of that was maybe usable, some of it was trash, um, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna, let's go back over here. I'll set the guitar back. So normally in, in the previous versions of live, if I just kept recording, this would make like one long clip and all these, you know, I let it play for about 24 bars, but it looks like we just have eight bars right here. So a new feature in Ableton 11 is the option to show take lanes. So now you can see all three passes of that section that I had loop all got captured onto different take, what's called take lanes. Um, that last one didn't really count. Um, so now what I could do, if I solo this, I can listen to just one take lane at a time if I want. So let's, let's hear just this first one. It sounded kind of okay up until this part right here. Let's, uh, let's listen to that same part on the second take. Nothing good there either. <laughs> up to the first, let's go to the third take. All right, so maybe that's useful. So. So what I can do, so if I, line, I like the first part of the first take, all you need to do is, there's, there's several ways to do it. With draw mode is probably the easiest. Turn on draw mode, I'm gonna highlight the first half of this part, and then highlight the second half of the third take, and then maybe I'll go back here to this third piece, and then maybe I'll use the outro for the second take. So when this plays now, it's going from take one to take three, to take one to take two, just really easily. So let's let's see if, if that makes sense musically now. It sounded like one take, right? Even though it was three pieces pieced together. And then once you figure that out, you can just hide the take lanes. You don't even have to think about it. That was so, that's like a, it really lets, makes it easy just to go in 
and improvise and jam and freestyle and stuff like that without having to worry about, hey, was this perfect? Or having to find that one little piece, copying it, pacing it later. That took me like, like 30 seconds to, to piece those takes together. I, sometimes I'll just play for like 20 minutes or something like that and maybe I'll find stuff that works just to find that one little riff or that one little note. Um, Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a pretty good DJ. I'm just like a, a mediocre guitar player. <laughs> so like, um, I know my strengths and weaknesses and this really helps you go in and, and just make you, make it easier to discover those little magical pieces and then piece them together. So yeah, that's, that's a fun one in uh, comping is brand new in Ableton 11. Now I did it live with a live, uh, Instrument, um, it doesn't. It, it works with anything that you do in live. So, just um, let's let's see if we could try to use the random note function to um, to to do something similar. Uh, so let's uh, let's take this. I'm going to duplicate this track one. And let's just let's try to ha have a little fun and be a little crazy here for a second. I'm going to copy this this chord progression with these basic chords that I I picked out. And what I'm going to do is. Um, is I'm going to put an arpeggiator on this chord progression. In Ableton 11, you'll notice that if we look at the MIDI effects or the audio effects, um, we have new folders. And if you look at the instruments, there's some there's additional instruments that are going to pop up that kind of have always been there. But these are uh, they've been previously you've had to go to the Max for Live tab and found them from there. But they're starting to incorporate the Max for Live audio effects, MIDI effects, and instruments in the main folders over here on the right. So let's, um, I'm gonna grab the arpeggiator and instead of just being a piano, let's, let's try to find like a synth lead sound. So I'm just gonna go over here, piano and keys, synth lead. Let's see if I can. That's kind of, kind of interesting maybe. And let's hear what this sounds like. Uh, it's a little bit too distorted, let's find it. Let's see. Let's go with this one, the celestial lead. And um, I just gotta drop that arpeggiator back on there really fast. Let's set this to be 16th notes. So what the arpeggiator does normally is our, it's, it starts, it will play, depending on the mode you have it set to, which by default it's not up, it plays the bottom note and then it plays the next note then it plays the top note, just in that order. Um, and if I set up, turn up the steps and have the distance at the one octave, it'll do it twice, so it'll go up and down. But now I can change the pattern. So let's try like Converge and Diver. So that's kind of interesting. But now what I, now um, if I go here and let's, what, if, I, if I select all these notes and then go to the chance, I'm gonna set the chance down to 50%. So what that means is every single time this plays, it's gonna be different. It's never gonna be the same twice. So yeah, it's, we can, you can kind of create music that just constantly plays itself and is never the same. And we can take and record this into a new audio track. Um, I'm gonna set this, the input of this track to be track two. And now um, let's go in and put some crazy audio effects on this. So I'm gonna, just for a second, I'm gonna go into the aftermarket um, audio effect world and put um, a third party effect called the Stutter Edit by Isotope. Uh, it's Stutter, not Studer Edit. <laughs> All right. And actually, I want the stutter at it two, not the stutter at it one. <laughs> Just a slightly newer version. Here we go. So what this is, this is like a really crazy multi-effects thing. And long story short, like what if you you can use um, what's called gestures to just do crazy effect sequences with one button, and you can also can use a MIDI keyboard or controller to control it. So, so I'm going to set the output of this to be. Uh, track two, and it's gonna be the stutter edit. 
And if I, if I solo both of these, now what I'm doing as, I, as I'm playing keys on the keyboard, um, it's actually triggering these different effect sequences to play, right? You can see they're switching right here. So let's, uh, just to show you what... All right, so I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff, right? <laughs> now I'm gonna set up one more track, like this This is track number four. I'm gonna record, arm it, and, and just, uh, I'm, just, I'm just gonna record a bunch of that experimentation with those random notes, with the effects, and let's see what happens. Let's see if anything useful comes out of it. All right, cool. So that was that was fun, right? <laughs> so um, if I go back, I could show the take lanes. I kind of like the second half of this right here, so we'll keep that going, and then maybe the first half of the first take, hide the take lanes. So it it really um, uh, really makes it easy just to kind of experiment. Now I can turn these tracks off, and we have some different pieces to work with. Um, but I, you're able to really just kind of be creative on its own. It's kind of like letting the machine take over, but you're guiding the direction it's going in, and you can do some fun stuff. Cool, all right, so I, I covered a lot of stuff. Um, what questions do you guys have? I know we did a lot. Uh, start in the back. What's up, what's your name, brother? Okay. What's, what's happening? So is this like, uh, able to go on the screen, or? Yes, so every, I mean, um, I believe you could have done everything that I did with the standard version. I am using the suite. Um, this is an aftermarket Ableton Pack drum kit that you can buy separately, and I don't think you need the suite in order to use it. Um, same thing with this, this piano. You could, I could have used just the regular piano. Everything else, though, you could have done with the standard. So, like, standard has all uh, some of the same features and stuff, like the stuff that you just yeah, all the, all the functionality um, that we talked about, like the note randomization, the scale editing, comping, um, all, all the features are gonna be included in the standard version. What's not included in, in, in the standard version that is in the suite is you get all these extra synthesizers and samplers. Um, you also get Max for Live, which opens the door up to a whole other universe of additional instruments, MIDI effects, and audio effects as well. Good question. What's up? Uh, uh, when you were playing the lead on guitar, how did you know how to play with notes in the chord? I didn't. I just kind of felt it. <laughs> I just, I know, my, my, you just, you could kind of, I know, I know how to play, once you know how to play a major scale or a minor scale on the guitar, um, it's about kind of finding the root that also feels like it's in the key of the song. So I just try to feel where the root is and then play the scale around that a little bit. And, and that's just something that's it just, just kind of, I don't have like, there's not like an easy way to do it aside from just practicing. Um, but yeah, that was all just improvised on the spot. I didn't know that we were gonna be doing a one, five, six, four chord progression in the key of D minor. If I had rehearsed that, I could have like really figured it out at home, but we, we made that up on the spot. So yeah, good question. <laughs> What's up? Um, it doesn't necessarily snap to grid. Um, if we go back here and just look at this last one, um, actually, let's go back to the guitar take lanes. It it looks like it did just because I stopped it in time with that loop section. But if we if this the the last take actually went. It was just like a little, it was like an eighth note long or something like that, and I just deleted it because it wasn't anything useful. But it's, as long as it's still recording, and once you go beyond that loop bracket, it's just gonna keep going until you, you stop it. 
Cool. Question. Um, again, with that comping, like, that stuff specifically with the guitar, can we look at that? Um, so, like, I saw you, like, you highlighted that stuff. Does that mean it turns into, like, the top, like, guitar track? Or is that still, like, the original tape? Okay, yeah, so the it's actually the top track we're looking at right here. Um, this is the comp of these three other takes. So the, fr the first time it, it ran through was right here, the second time it looped, and the third time was here. But the top track is the comp version of all three of these that we picked out. It does that automatically? Yeah, it puts, uh, it puts your selection of the comps on top. Yeah, so like if I go like this, now it's just that take, now it's just that take. You can also just turn one take on or turn the other one off just by toggling them so you don't have to, work. if you didn't want to make a composite take, you could do that or you can uh, piece them together as, as you see fit that way. Cool, good question. Can you, can you manually do a uh, keep adding playlists like you had it in loop mode? Yeah. Can you, would it just be Start and stop and start and stop it. Like, let's say you want to have a vocalist too. Like, yes. Yeah, so that. yeah. So let's say that you already have like 20 vocal takes on 20 different tracks, but they weren't recorded in a loop like we just did in real time. Um, you have the ability to um, to um, the show. To you can you have the option of creating your own um, take lanes for any audio clips after they've already been recorded. So like if I come over here. Uh, let's just find some drum loops. Do, 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 do. I don't know, here's like a whole bunch of drum loops. If I put these on different tracks, um, let's, uh, I believe you can just, oh, what you can do is add take lanes. That's, that's the, here, let me undo that for a second. So, yeah, so if we start with a new audio track and there aren't any take lanes there, um, you have the option of, of ins adding them on take lanes. So, like, uh, let's see. I forgot how to do it, but I know you can. <laughs> let's see. That's what I was looking for. It's, it's, op it's um, option... Uh, shift T. Okay. That's that's what we you want to do first. Thank you. Uh, shift Option T. So boom. Now we have all these additional take lanes, okay. and you hold on Option. Now these are all different loops on different take lanes on the same track, and now you know we can go in and uh, let me turn off draw mode, move these over. Boom. Boom, boom. This, if they all were the same length, this process would be a little bit easier, but, but now we can go in and make a composite take out of all these pieces right here, just from all these different loops that uh, I pulled in that sounds like this. Let's... Uh, yeah, this one's kind of wacky, but... <laughs> yeah, that's a Mr. Bill, uh, uh, Mr. Bill comp right there. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can make, so sometimes it's fun to do that. Like, if we found, like, regular drum loops, let me just, uh, let's, let's just, if we try that with something that's, like, already, like, in the same, fr well, I've, I, I've, I've done this with bass lines, too. Um, you guys have probably heard of the dubstep producer, Virtual Riot. Um, and this, so if I make a bunch of take lanes right here, what I'm going to do is take, I'm going to take a bunch of, a bunch of these different dubstep, um, bass loops, all in the key of F. I don't know, so yeah, there's a, there's a few, it's easier if they're in the same key, but they don't have to be. Um, you can transpose them. All right. And let's duplicate. All right. So now um, I'll just go in and make like a composite dubstep bass loop. 
boom, and we'll let this one end it. Something like that. So here's the, the composite dubstep bass. <laughs> Sounds really fast because it's like we're playing at 100, but Ableton is counting them as being 75 beats per minute. So in practical, um, a practical speed would be down. <laughs> You know, if we just, this is what just the, the top one sounded like. It's a little bit, you know, but we made a, a variation of it. So you can, you know, you can make your own. I, I wouldn't recommend just stealing all virtual lights, virtual rides, bass loops, and making your own out. I mean, you could, um, but you could make your, of like 10 of your own loops, put them in there, and comp them together, and make them into something new, the same way, which is fun. Cool, crush. Um, when you have draw mode on, you can just you can just click, just do a, a normal left click, and that will automatically move it to that particular uh, whatever uh, take that you highlight over. Cool. Any other questions? Those are good ones. <laughs> Um, well, you, it's, it, you can only randomize the playback of MIDI notes. So if you wanted to randomize audio, um, you, would, you would just need to load the audio pieces into, a, into samplers or samplers where that would then be triggering the audio back. So like, let's, let's, say, um, let's say we wanted to randomize um, a, a bass loop. I'll just, I'll just grab a different one of these virtual right ones here, for example. Um, yeah, let me not put it in the take lane, and we'll collapse that. So anyway, so if I wanted to randomize this, I could slice it to a new MIDI track, and I'll slice it every eighth note, and we'll choose the built-in. So when you slice it, now we have one note that's triggering each part of this audio loop right here. So if we solo, it, sh it should sound the same as it does over here. It's kind of crazy sounding. Right, so if, now if I didn't have these all playing, what I, what I could do is um, go through and then either select all of them, turn the chance down, so now only certain ones will play, and then we can mix up the order. So it does something different. I don't know. <laughs> so now they're not all. Some of them are playing, some of them aren't in a different order and stuff like that. So there is a way to do it with some programming, um, but it, there, is a, there is no way to act, actually go in and just randomize this, the audio playback when it's in an audio clip on an audio track by itself. You gotta sample it in MIDI first and then go back. Cool. Yeah? Another question about the, the config. Mm -hmm. When you're doing like, the different parts and uh, like slicing or whatever, uh, is it like a, a hard cut to the next sample or is it like a you just sort of transition? Um, if you look closely, um, you'll see that there isn't like a fade. Normally, by default, in your Ableton audio preferences, um, there's an option to put um, fades on the clip edges. Where the heck is yeah? So, which I have turned off. Um, I think that if it was on, it actually would fade the, the next clip into the next one to prevent any clicks or pops when you're doing the comping. But because I turned it off and my I had it turned off already in my preferences, it didn't do that. Um, I could test it out one more time here. Just so like now that now that I've I've re-enabled to create the fades automatically. Um, let's say if I make a new audio track, insert a bunch of take lanes, and boom. So if we start copying these together, do, 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 do. Uh, 
All right. So if you look in closely now, you'll see that it has the fades on. It has a cross fade at the edge of the clip. So it just depends on. A, um, I don't. I go back and forth with turning this option on and off. Uh, because I had it off, it didn't do it. But normally, by default, unless you've changed it, it's on. That's why, like, especially the guitar, um, it's, if you listen closely, you might be able to hear, but the guitar is typically pretty forgiving. Like, you can, you can chop up a guitar audio track pretty sharply and, and have the waveforms not, not line up perfectly where, where they're cutting from one to another, and most of the time you won't be able to hear it or tell. It just kind of blends in, but when it's something like a vocal or a bass or something a little bit smoother and rounder of a waveform, with something without distortion, um, it's more important to have those fades in there to smooth out the, the comps. Cool. Yeah, uh, speaking of comps, like, Pro Tools has a comp feature where you can turn off the grid and just use slip mode. Yeah. Is, is that something similar? Yeah, so if right now, um, what when, if you're using draw mode to edit the clips, um, to edit the comps takes um, from each take, it's got to quantize it to whatever your, your Ableton arrangement grid is set to. If you don't want to do it, you can just hit Command 4, turn off the grid, and now you're, you're free form um, creating these comps. It's not snapping to the grid at all. Yeah, it's just a matter of disabling the grid if you don't want don't to use it. That might sound kind of wacky. Let's see. Not terrible, right? Sounds like Primus or something. <laughs> you did a thing last time where you brought in, like, I think it was a drum loop. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it was pretty advanced drum loop. It was one of your favorites in one of the packs that you used. I can't remember what it was. Okay. Yeah, from the cashmere pack. Yeah, yeah. Maybe pull in something like that again. Yeah. yeah. If we're starting from scratch, let's say we're, we're doing drum and bass. Again, I'm going to start by bumping the tempo up to 174 beats per minute. Let's go over here to drums. I'm going to start um, with an empty drum rack. I know I, I want a kick, a snare, some hi-hat, and some other percussion, so I might have went here to the Mr. Bill pack. We'll go to drums. We'll go to kicks. Let's, let's do a punchy kick. That works. Kick. Let's do a snare. And let's get a, a hi-hat closed. All right, just so we'll, we can use this as our foundation. And there. So this is kind of like our, that's kind of a, a safe, traditional um, drum and bass foundation. And then we can duplicate this, and then we can put some 16th note hi-hats in, like so. So it's, it's kind of too much, right? So what I can do is turn down the velocity range of those hi-hats. And also turn down the chance of those hi-hats as well. All right, and now um, just to spice it up, we can find some other pieces of percussion that could work um, with this as well. So I might go to this percussion folder and let's just see what else we have in here. I got a question. Yeah. Uh, other than chance, is there a way to, that you can randomize the quantization? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if. So you're saying, so, so they're not always coming in on 16th notes or 8th notes so to, to vary them? You, you, you can't do it just with the MIDI clip, but I believe there are um, external Max for Live MIDI note sequencers that can do that. Um, once you get out of the, just the, the standard MIDI note editor um, and, and, and you start using other, um, other sequencers and, and arpeggiators and stuff like that, uh, you, I believe you can, but not not directly. So, 
check this out. I'm going to grab like all these, the, a bunch of these notes, duplicate them. So if I let it play right now, it's just going to be too insanely crazy, right, with all these notes playing. But if I, if we select them and then do some ran, some chance randomization, just on those, let's let's put the chance pretty low because there's a lot of different notes in there. Let's uh, hear what that. And let's uh, let's mix this a little bit better because the kick and the snare were kind of low and everything else was a little bit loud. It's not as good as when I did it last time. <laughs> so. Uh. And I want to make sure my, you know, this, I'm going to crank up the velocity and make sure the kick and snare chances were all the way up. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, so like ignoring the kick and the snare for a second, we just have this percussion that's constantly playing, constantly varying up. You know, it's enough to really keep, a, keep the track interesting. And I'm just trying to see why my snare is not uh, playing like it should. <laughs> Let's see. Velocity should be all the way up. And the chance, yeah, the chance just got turned down on my snare, that's why. And same thing for this. Like kicks. I was I was editing the wrong clip. All right, there we go. There we go. Now we're like back in more drum and bass world. It's just gotta keep going, and you can just you know you don't even have to think about like if you're trying to program in all those micro percussion variations, it can get real tedious and it can take a long time, but this is kind of like set it and forget it. And it's like, boom, you have a whole, you have a whole song's worth of variations automatically in there, which is, which is a lot of fun. Cool. All right, cool. Well, thanks guys. I think that's a wrap for tonight, right? Are we about on time? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks guys. That was fun. You got some great questions.